Now let's talk about what happens when more strong acid is, or more strong base is added. And this time we're going to add, and yours might be corrected, not 30, but 300.0 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And uh, this is going to be a reaction that goes to completion. That means we're going to have, just like last time, so we're going to allow the strong base to react with the weak acid, uh, just like we did last time. And we're going to set up a mole ice table with our acetic acid plus our hydroxide goes to water plus acetate. This is a mole ice table. That's why we're writing our units here to make sure that we know it's not a molarity ice table. Everything we do in here will be moles. And relying on uh, the last slide and the previous one to that too, we know that we have 0 0.0250 moles of acetic acid, 0 0.0250 moles here. Um, and now if we multiply 0.3 liters, which is 300, milliliters times 0.1, we're going to get 0 0.0300 moles of hydroxide ion. And what we can do is now our limiting reactant is the weak acid. It's because it's the smaller number. Always subtract the smaller number. So really ice tables in this format, mole ice tables are another way of doing limiting reactant problems. And 0 0.0250, right? It's got to be the same. The X, the change values have to be related to the coefficients, which are all ones. There we go. Mm -hmm. Good. And zero. 0 0.0050. 0 0.0500. And so uh after you do the reaction, you're always going to ask, well, it says step two, still got a buffer. Great. Use henderson Hasselbauch. Um, we do not have a buffer because there is no weak acid. And in order to have a buffer, you need to have both a weak acid and its conjugate weak base. We have a strong base. And we have a weak base. And um, so, just like always, we think about what's going to happen next. Um, whenever you have a strong base, the strong base rules over the weak base. So still got a buffer, uh, no buffer, right? No buffer. Look at what's left. We have a strong base, we have a weak base. Strong base rules. And then the question is, do you remember back to your previous Gen Chem 1 experience in determining, uh, at least if you took it with me, how to determine the pH of a solution with a uh, that it has a strong base? And the way that you do it is you find the concentration of the strong base, the concentration of the hydroxide, which in this case, we know we have 0 0.0050 moles of hydroxide. And we have 300 plus 250, that's 550 milliliters, that's 0 0.550 liters. So we can find the concentration. And yes, we are ignoring this weak base, even though there's 10 times more of it. So let's see, uh, 0 0.005 divided by 0 0.550, I get 0 0.00909 molar hydroxide, and then pOH is the negative log of the concentration of uh, hydroxide, which will be, uh, let's just do this, so 0 0.00909 log, I get 2.04 and pH 
equals 14 minus POH. That's something we've done before. And that gives us 11.96 as our pH for this particular example, because we had strong base and strong base rules for determining pH, strong anything, strong acid, if we had it left over, would rule as well.